Welcome everyone to our Arts Ignite Now video on Women's History Month. My name is Mariella Ochoa and I am the co-founder of Concerts for Compassion. Today we're going to start with a brief meditation and breathing exercise. We're going to breathe in for the count of five and breathe out for a count of ten. And feel free if you want, if you want to raise your arms up while you do it to make the exhale even stronger, feel free. So we're going to inhale for five. One, two, three, four, five, and exhale for 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Today, we're going to be exploring the contributions of women in the arts. Now, as our first exercise, I want everybody to think of if they can remember any female composers um, that have contributed to classical music. The first one that you may have heard of is Maria Anna Mozart, which the name sounds familiar. She was Mozart's older sister. They performed a lot together as children, but when she reached the marriageable age at the time, she was no longer encouraged to work as a musician because she was expected to have a family. Now we do believe that she also composed a little bit and she was a fantastic pianist and equally as talented, many say, as the very famous Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. The next female composer, who is one of the most notable composers throughout history, who was female, is Fanny Mendelssohn, who was the older sister of Felix Mendelssohn. She was also a very, very good composer. We do know, in fact, that she actually composed some of Felix Mendelssohn's works, but because she was a woman at the time, she couldn't publish her own compositions, so her brother basically signed off the work so it could be published. Now, the other composer, which is a very notable composer, um, is Florence Price, who was living in the 20th century, and she was actually the first African-American female composer whose works were featured by major symphonic orchestras. She got her education at the New England Conservatory, which is still um, educating lots of musicians today, and her works are celebrated by a lot of musicians and more and more and she composed a variety of really beautiful works. So the final composer that we're gonna to explore today, her name is Francisca Gonzaga, and she was a Brazilian composer who lived in the 1800s and the 1900s, and she was actually the first female conductor in Brazil. And the work we're going to listen to now is called Balada, and it's written for two violins, and we're going to listen to it now, and I invite you to just listen to it with open ears and think about what emotions come to mind when you hear this music. So next, we're going to ask a very important question, which is, why do we play music? Now, people have many different opinions about this, but my opinion is that music helps the audience and the performer feel and express and process emotions and therefore connect to themselves and to the world around them. Today, as our next exercise, we're gonna experiment with all the different emotions that we can express when we play music. So what we're going to do now is we're going to listen to this opening phrase of the ballada and I invite you to sing along with the phrase. Each time we're going to pick a different character. So the first time we're going to sing and play this phrase in a happy way. So I invite you to sing along 
in the happiest way that you can possibly sing. Now take a listen as to how a violinist might try to express the emotion of happiness when they play this opening phrase. As our next emotion, let's try to sing the opening phrase, angry, right? So I invite you to sing along and try to make it sound as angry as you possibly can. Now, I hope that got all of our frustrations out. So now take a listen as to how you could play this phrase in an angry way on the violin. Now as our final emotion, let's try to sing this phrase in a tired way. Right? So sing along with the opening melody and try to make your voice sound tired. Maybe you can even show it with your body language. You can slouch over and just make it sound as tired as you can. So now take a listen as to how you could make this sound tired on the violin. that was the same piece of music but depending on how we sang it and how we played it it sounded completely different and if there's an audience member listening they would feel different types of emotions based on how you as the singer and me in this case as the violinist or whoever's performing plays or sings this phrase so this is a wonderful example of how we can use music to process emotions and to work through emotions and to feel emotions and connect with the people around us. As our final exercise for today, I want everyone to close their eyes and just become still for a second and think about what emotion you're feeling at this very moment. feeling frustrated? Are you feeling content? Vulnerable? Any of these emotions. And now, think about how you can express this emotion in your life today. How can we, each one of us, with our emotion of today, express this to the people around us? Either through music, through art, or through our words in communication with the people around us. We hope you enjoyed our video today. Um, feel free to comment on the video if you have any thoughts and also please tag us on social media at artsignite.org. Thank you for joining us today and see you next time.